Ladies and gentlemen, in just a moment you are going to hear the voice of a man who will tell you some tremendously important facts. Welcome to the Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. I'm delighted to return to Joseph Murphy today and read an amazing lecture that Joseph Murphy gave on the wealth mindset. We have looked at Joseph Murphy's teachings on prosperity and abundance in a number of lectures. One of my favorites is his book, How to Attract Money. This book offers some amazing affirmations and gives you stories and ideas around his philosophy of attracting wealth into your life. The Wealth Mindset by Dr. Joseph Murphy. The whole world and all its treasures and the sea, air, and earth were here when you were born. Begin to think of the untold and undiscovered riches all around you waiting for the intelligence of man to bring them forth. Look upon wealth as the air you breathe. Get that attitude of mind. Emerson demonstrated to a woman who wanted to prosper by taking her down to the ocean and saying, take a look. And she said, oh, there's plenty of water, isn't there? He said, look at wealth that way and you'll always have it. Realize that wealth is like the tide forever flowing out and forever flowing back. A sales manager said to me that an associate of his sold a million dollar idea for expansion to the organization. You can have an idea worth a fortune too. Wealth is a thought image in your mind. Wealth is an idea in your mind. Wealth is a mental attitude. This sales manager also told me there were more millionaires now in the United States than at any time in the history of the country. You can have an idea worth a fortune. Yes, you can. Moreover, you are here to release the imprisoned splendor within you and surround yourself with luxury, beauty, and the riches of life. It is necessary to have the right attitude towards money, wealth, food, clothing, and all life's necessities. When you really make friends with wealth, you will always have a surplus of it. It is normal and natural for you to desire a fuller, richer, happier, and more wonderful life. Look upon money as God's idea of maintaining the economic health of the nations of the world. When money is circulating freely in your life, you are economically healthy. In the same manner as when your blood is circulating freely, you are free from congestion. Begin now to see money in its true significance and role in life as a symbol of exchange. That's all it is. It has taken many forms down through the ages. Money to you should mean freedom from want. It should mean beauty, luxury, abundance, a sense of security and refinement. You are entitled to it. Being poor is a disease. It is a mental attitude. A young woman, a very good writer who had several articles accepted for publication, said to me one time, I don't write for money. I said to her, what's wrong with money? It's true you don't write for money, but the labor is worthy of its hire. What you write inspires, uplifts, and encourages others. When you adopt the right attitude, financial compensation will automatically come to you freely and copiously. She actually disliked money. You know, once she referred to money as filthy lucre. Going back, I suppose, in the early days, she probably heard her mother or somebody say, money is evil, or the love of money is the root of all evil, and all these things without any understanding at all. It's a rank superstition to say money is evil or filthy lucre. This woman had a subconscious pattern that there is some virtue in poverty. There isn't. Poverty is a sickness, a disease. I explained to her that there is no evil in the universe and that good and evil were in the thoughts and motivations of man. All evil comes from misinterpretations of life and misuse of the laws of mind. 
In other words, the only evil is ignorance, and the only consequence is suffering. It would be foolish to pronounce uranium, silver, lead, copper, iron, cobalt, nickel, calcium, or a dollar bill as evil. How absurd, grotesque, and stupid that is. The only difference between one metal and another is the number and rate of motions of electrons revolving around a central nucleus. A piece of paper, such as a hundred dollar bill, is innocuous, and the only difference between it and copper and lead is that the atoms and molecules with their electrons and protons are arranged differently for the physical evidence of money. Here's a simple technique she practiced which multiplied wealth in her experience. My writings go forth to bless, heal, inspire, elevate, and dignify the minds and hearts of men and women, and I am divinely compensated in a wonderful way. I look upon money as divine substance, for everything is made from the one spirit. I know money and spirit are one. Money is constantly circulating in my life, and I use it wisely and constructively. Money flows to me freely, joyously, and endlessly. Money is an idea in the mind of God. It is good and very good. That is a wonderful prayer. It eradicates the superstitious nonsense about money being evil, or that there's some virtue in poverty, or that the Lord loves the poor. All of that is rank superstition. It is frightful ignorance. That's all it is. The young lady's changed attitude toward money worked wonders in her life. It will work wonders in your life, too. She completely eradicated that strange superstitious belief that money is filthy lucre. She realized that her silent condemnation of money caused money to fly from her instead of to her. Her income tripled in three months, which was just the beginning of her financial prosperity. Some years ago, I talked with a clergyman who had a very good following, yet an excellent knowledge of the laws of mind was able to impart this knowledge to others, but he could never make ends meet. He had what he thought was a good alibi for his plight by quoting from Timothy, for the love of money is the root of all evil. That's in the book of Timothy in the 6th chapter, 10th verse. But he had forgotten what followed in the 17th verse of the same chapter. In other words, he took it out of context because it is also written in the book of Timothy that Paul charges the people to place their trust or faith in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. Love in biblical language, is to give your allegiance, loyalty, and faith to the source of all things, which is God or the living spirit or the life principle in you. You are therefore to give your allegiance, loyalty, and trust to the Creator, the eternal source of everything in the universe, the source of your own breath, the source of your life, the source of the hair on your head, the source of your heartbeat, the source of the sun, moon, and stars, the source of the world and the earth you walk on. If a man says, all I want is money, nothing else, that's my God, and nothing but money matters, he can get it, of course, but he's here to lead a balanced life. Man must also claim peace, harmony, beauty, guidance, love, joy, and wholeness in all phases of his life. How can he live without courage, faith, goodwill, and joy in this world today? There's nothing wrong with money, not a thing in the world, but that's not the sole aim in life. To make money the sole aim in life would constitute an error, a wrong choice. There wouldn't be anything evil in it, but you'd be imbalanced and lopsided. You must express your hidden talents. You must find your true place in life. You must experience the joy of contributing to the growth happiness, and success of others. We are all here to give our talents to the world. God gave you everything. God gave you himself. You have a tremendous debt to pay because you owe everything you have to the infinite. Therefore, you are here to give life, love, and truth to your ideals, to your dreams, and to your aspirations. You're here to row the boat to put your hand to the wheel and contribute to the success and happiness, not only of your children, 
but of the whole world. To accumulate money to the exclusion of everything else causes man to become imbalanced, lopsided, and frustrated. Yes, as you apply the laws of the subconscious in the right way, you can have all the money you want and still have peace of mind, harmony, wholeness, and serenity. You can do a lot of good with money. You can use it wisely, judiciously, and constructively. Just like anything in nature, you can use your knowledge or philosophy in a constructive way, or you can brainwash impressionable minds with communism and all the rest of it. I pointed out to this minister how he was completely misinterpreting the scripture and how he was pronouncing the pieces of paper and metals as evil when in fact they are neutral substances, for there is nothing good or bad, but thinking makes it so. He began to see all the good he could do with more money for his wife, family, and parishioners. He changed his attitude and let go of his superstition. He began to claim boldly, regularly, and systematically. Infinite Spirit reveals better ways for me to serve. I am inspired and illumined from on high, and I am given a divine transfusion of faith and confidence in the one presence and power. To all those who hear me, I look upon money as God's idea and it is constantly circulating in my life and the lives of all the people who surround me. We use it wisely, judiciously, and constructively under God's guidance and God's wisdom. This young clergyman made a habit of this prayer knowing that it would activate powers of his subconscious mind. Today, he has a beautiful church which he wanted. The people build it for him. He also has a radio program and has all the money he needs for his personal, worldly, and cultural needs. I can assure you that he no longer criticizes money. If you criticize money, it will fly away from you because you're condemning that which you're praying for. Follow this technique which I'm going to outline for you and you'll never want for wealth all the days of your life. The first step. The first step is to reason it out in your mind that God or the life principle, or the living spirit is the source of the universe. The galaxies in space and everything you see, whether you look at the stars in the sky, the mountains, the lakes, the deposits in the earth, and the sea, or all animals and plants, the life principle gave birth to you, and all the powers, qualities, and attributes of God are within you. Come to the simple conclusion that everything you see and are aware of came out of the invisible mind of the infinite or the life principle. Everything that man has invented, created, or made came out of the invisible mind of man. And the mind of man and the mind of God are one, for there is only one mind. The mind is common to all individual men. Everyone is an inlet and outlet to all that is. Come now to a clear-cut decision that God is the source of your supply of energy, vitality, health, and creative ideas. He is the source of the sun, the air you breathe, the apple you eat, and the money in your pocket. For everything has been inside and out of the invisible. It is as easy for God to become wealth in your life as it is to become a blade of grass or a crystal of snow. The second step. The second step is to decide now to engrave in your subconscious mind the idea of wealth. Ideas are conveyed to the subconscious by repetition, faith, and expectancy. By repeating a thought or pattern or an act over and over again, it becomes automatic, and your subconscious being compulsive will compel you to express wealth. The pattern is the same as learning to walk, swim, play the piano, type, or drive a car. You must believe in what you are affirming. It's not mumbo-jumbo, it's not idle affirmations. You must believe in what you're affirming like. You believe that when you put seeds in the ground, they will grow after their kind. The seeds are thoughts deposited in your own subconscious mind. Realize that what you are affirming is like the apple seed you deposit in the ground that grows after its kind. You can imagine the seeds going from your conscious to your subconscious mind and being reproduced on the screen of space. By watering and fertilizing these seeds, you accelerate their growth. You know what you are doing and why you are doing it. You're writing it with your conscious pen on your subconscious mind because you know wealth is. You walk down the street and you see wealth. 
Can you count the flowers on the side of the road as you drive? Can you count each grain of sand on the seashore? Can you count the stars in the sky? Can you count the wealth that you are walking on? Yes, underneath you there is wealth. Maybe oil, gold, silver, or uranium. Do you ever think of the riches of the sea, the soil, and the air? The third step. The third step is to repeat the following affirmation for about five minutes, night, and morning. I am now writing in my subconscious mind the idea of God's wealth. God is the source of my supply. When I know God is the life principle within me, and I know I'm alive, all my needs are met at every moment of time and point of space. God's wealth flows freely, joyously, and endlessly into my experience, and I give thanks for God's riches forever circulating in my life. The fourth step. When thoughts of lack come to you, such as, I can't afford that trip, or I can't meet that note in the bank, or I can't pay that bill, never, never finish a negative statement about finances. This is mandatory. Reverse it immediately in your mind by affirming, God is my instant and everlasting supply, and that bill is paid in divine order. If a negative thought comes to you 50 times in one hour, reverse it each time by thinking and affirming, God is my instant supply meeting my needs right now. After a while, the thought of financial lack will lose all momentum, and you will find your subconscious mind being conditioned toward wealth. If you look at a new car, for example, never say, I can't buy that, or I can't afford that. Your subconscious mind takes you literally and blocks all your good. On the contrary, say to yourself, that car is for sale. It is a divine idea, and I accept it in divine order through divine love. This is the master key to wealth. It's impossible for any sincere person to practice this technique and not have all the wealth they need all the days of their life. So follow it and set the new law of opulence in operation. It will work for you as well as for anybody else. The law of mind is no respecter of persons. Your thoughts make you wealthy or poor. Choose the riches of life right here and right now. A sales manager sent me one of his men for counseling. This salesman was a brilliant college graduate and he knew his products very well. He was in a lucrative territory, was only making $5,000 annually in commissions. The sales manager felt he should double or triple it. In talking to the young man, I found he was down on himself. He had developed a subconscious pattern or self-image of $5,000 a year. In other words, he believed that was all he was worth. He said that he had been born in a poverty-stricken home and that his parents had told him that he was destined to be poor. His stepfather had always told him, you'll never amount to anything. You are dumb and you are stupid. These thoughts were accepted by his impressionable mind. And he was experiencing his subconscious belief in lack and limitation. I explained to him that he could change his subconscious mind by feeding it with life-giving patterns. Accordingly, I gave him a mental and spiritual formula to follow which transformed his life. I explained to him that he should under no circumstances deny what he affirmed because he had shown his subconscious mind would accept his convictions and what he really believed. He affirmed the following every morning before going to work. I am born to succeed. I am born to win. The infinite within me cannot fail. Divine law and order govern my life. Divine peace fills my soul. Divine love saturates my mind. Infinite intelligence guides me in all ways. God's riches flow to me ceaselessly. I'm advancing, moving forward, and growing mentally, spiritually, financially, and in all ways. I know these truths are sinking into my subconscious mind, and I know. I believe they will grow after their kind. A year later, when I met this young man again, I discovered that he had been transformed. He had absorbed these ideas which we had discussed and he said, I am appreciating life now and wonderful things have happened. I have an income of 25,000 this year, five times greater than my previous year. He has learned the simple truth that whatever he inscribes in his subconscious mind becomes effective and functional in his life. This same power is within you. You can use it also. 
Robbie Wright, the young boy who is operating the machine while I am broadcasting, told me about his uncle who used to work in a bank. He wanted to make more money for his wife and children, and he was always affirming, God is my instant supply. I am divinely guided in all my ways, and infinite spirit opens up new doors. Well, he told me his uncle was in town about two months ago, and that his salary is now $200,000 a year, and all his expenses are paid. Before he started to realize the truth about himself, he was only receiving $40,000 a year. Now he is able to do great things, and he's living a wonderful life down south in another state. All of this was an idea in his mind. Wealth is an idea. A radio is an idea. A television is an idea. An automobile is an idea. Everything you look at is an idea. Suppose you destroyed all the automobiles in the world due to some holocaust. Well, an engineer could run them off on a production line, couldn't he? We'd have millions of automobiles in no time. Use the following meditation for assurance in achieving financial wealth. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. I know that my faith in God determines my future. My faith in God means my faith in all things good. I unite myself now with true ideas, and I know the future will be the image and likeness of my habitual thinking. As a man thinketh in his heart or his subconscious, so is he. From this moment forward, my thoughts are on whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are lovely and of good report. Day and night I meditate on these things, and I know these seeds, which are thoughts I habitually dwell upon, will become a rich harvest for me. I am the captain of my soul. I am the master of my fate, for my thought and feeling are my destiny. You see, prayers and affirmations are not for the purpose of changing God or the living spirit or the life principle or influencing the divine. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You don't change God, but you align yourself mentally with that which was always true. You don't create harmony. Harmony is. You don't create love. God is love, and that love of God is within you. You don't create peace. God is peace, and God indwells you. But you must claim that peace of God floods your mind. You must claim the harmony of God is in your home. You must claim that harmony is in your pocketbook, your business, and all phases of your life. All good is available to each of us. Our prayers and affirmations are for the purpose of bringing our own mind to the point where we can accept the gifts which were given to us from the foundation of time. For God is the giver of the gift. The oil was in the ground before you were born and before any man walked the earth. So was gold, silver, uranium, lead, copper, and all the metals that we use. Today they are all there. Didn't it take a little intelligence in the mind of man to find these things? Yes. So you can send two men to Utah, and one man is a geologist or a mineralogist, and he finds nothing. Another man goes, and within the first five minutes, he finds the vein of uranium or silver in the same territory in the same land. Where was the wealth? The wealth was in the mind of the second man. He believed in a guiding principle. The other fellow found nothing, even though he was walking on it. For there is a guiding principle that will lead you to. That guiding principle is what led men to find silver, gold, oil, lead, and all these things. We don't need to work on conditions. We need only to work on ourselves. The only place we can cure our lack and limitation is in our own mind. Be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind. Whatsoever things you ask for when you pray, believe that you have received them and you shall have them. That is the basis of all successful prayer, whether for the healing of our bodies, for prosperity, success, achievement, or for material benefits. Once you convince your deeper mind that you have the thing you want, it will proceed immediately to bring it to pass. You might say to me, how can I convince my deeper mind, my subconscious, that I have riches or any other good thing? When my common sense tells me that bills are piling up, creditors are after me, the bank is calling up for the mortgage and for the money I owe, and so on. Well, you can't if you keep thinking about debts, obligations, and how much you owe. You'll only magnify your misery. But here's the truth about the laws of your mind. 
Your deeper mind accepts as a fact whatever you repeat to it in convincing tones often enough. Just the same as you learnt to walk, you had a thought pattern, an act, whether it was swimming or walking or playing tennis or golf, and you repeated it over and over and over again. You knew what you were doing and why you were doing it. You wanted to learn to walk. You wanted to learn to dance. You wanted to learn to swim. So finally, your subconscious assimilated the pattern, didn't it? Then you swam automatically and you walked automatically. It is the same procedure in praying for wealth or anything else. Once your subconscious accepts the statements as a fact, it proceeds to do everything possible to bring riches to you. Now that's the whole purpose of affirmations, to convince yourself of the truth of that which you affirm. Then your deeper mind will bring these things to pass. A man said to me, Oh, I got an affirmation from someone and it said, I am rich and prosperous now. I'm successful and I'm very wealthy. That affirmation succeeded in making me much more aware of my need. This is because he believed more in poverty and lack than the riches all around him. So I explained to him that he must turn away from that pattern and change his belief because your subconscious mind accepts what you believe. I said, look around you and realize that God created you and the whole world. It's an invisible spirit within you. Everything is made inside and out of it. It's the air you breathe, the water you drink, and the fruit you eat. Therefore, turn away and turn within and change your pattern to say, I recognize the eternal source of my supply. God is the source of my supply. All my needs, spiritual, mental, and material, are met at every moment of time and point of space. God's wealth is circulating in my life. And there's always a surplus. By day and by night, I am advancing, moving forward, and growing spiritually, mentally, materially, financially, intellectually, and in every way. All things be ready if the mind be so. It is done unto me as I believe. Before they call, I will answer. While they're speaking, I will hear. Oh, how I love the law. Let it be my meditation both day and night. The law is, I am what I contemplate. I am what I believe myself to be. According to my faith is it done unto me. God gave me richly all things to enjoy. God made me rich. Why then am I poor? As he began to realize the source of the infinite ocean of supply, the source of the very hair on his head, the source of the power that enables him to lift a chair, the source of the grass, the source of the hay in the field, the source of the cattle on a thousand hills, he began to align himself with it. It made sense to him, and he realized he was writing in his subconscious mind the idea of wealth, growth, and prosperity. He changed his belief to a belief in the riches, the endless riches all around him, instead of poverty, which was a false belief in his mind. Don't you know there's enough fruit that rots in the tropics to feed all of humanity? Nature is lavish, extravagant, and bountiful. God gave you richly all things to enjoy. These things he said, I've said unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and your joy might be full. Heretofore you've asked for nothing, now ask that your joy might be full. I am come, that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Heretofore you've asked for nothing, now ask that your joy might be full. To ask in the Bible, to claim, and as Paul says, you claim it boldly, and you know what you're doing and why you're doing it, so if you have a lot of debts, a lot of obligations, a lot of bills to pay, don't worry about them. Turn to the source, which is endless. Remember when the farmer said, well, I don't worry about the weeds. The grain is growing and it will kill all the weeds. That's what the farmer tells you. Likewise, as you focus on your good, on guidance, right action, and the eternal source of your supply, whether you need mental, spiritual, or financial help, there's but one source, not two. And as you turn to it and give thanks for your endless supply, then all the weeds will be killed. Thoughts of lack and limitation will die in you, and God will multiply your good exceedingly. To bring joy into your life, pray for joy by claiming it. The joy of the Lord is my strength, the Bible says. Repeat that to yourself, and after a while you'll be amazed at what will happen to your bloodstream and to your general circulation. Don't keep analyzing it or gritting your teeth about it. Just know that joy is the essence of life, the expression of life. Don't work like a horse at it. Use no willpower, no muscle power, 
No blood vessel powers need to be involved in this mental and spiritual therapeutic technique. Just know and claim that the joy of the Lord is flowing through you now and wonders will happen as you pray this way. Freedom and peace of mind will be yours as a result. If you have peace of mind, you'll have peace in your pocketbook, in your home, and in your relationships with people, for peace is the power at the heart of God. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God. The city of God is your mind and the people who dwell there. Well, you know very well who dwells there. Your thoughts, ideas, images, beliefs, and opinions. Make sure that they conform to the divine standard. A woman said to me, I was blocked financially. I had reached the point where I didn't have enough money for food for the children. All I had, she said, was five dollars. I held it in my hand and said, God will multiply this exceedingly according to his riches and glory. I am now filled with the riches of the infinite. All my needs are instantaneously met now in all the days of my life. She believed that. It wasn't idle words. You don't gain the ear of God by vain repetitions. No, you must know what you're doing and why you're doing it. You must know that your conscious mind is a pen and you are writing or engraving something in your subconscious mind and whatever you impress your subconscious mind with will be expressed on the screen of space. It'll come forth as form, function, experience, and events, good or bad. So make sure you plant that which is lovely and of good report. She said, I affirmed that all my needs are instantaneously met now and all the days of my life for about a half an hour and a great sense of peace came over me. I spent the five dollars freely for food. The owner of the market asked me if I wanted to work there as a cashier since the present one had just gotten married and left. I accepted it and shortly afterwards I married the owner, my boss, and we have experienced and are experiencing all the riches of life. This woman looked to the source. She didn't know how her prayer would be answered because you never know the workings of your subconscious mind. She believed in her heart and the blessings of the infinite. To believe is to live in the state of being what you wish to be. It also means to be alive to the eternal truths. Her good was magnified and multiplied exceedingly because the subconscious always magnifies what you give attention to. There is a presence and a power within you and you can use it and you can stir up as Paul says, the gift of God is within you for God is the giver and the gift and everything has been given to you. Therefore, you can tune in and claim guidance, right action, beauty, love, peace, abundance, and security. You can say to yourself, God's ideas unfold within me, bringing me harmony, health, peace, and joy. If you're in business or you're a professional, an artist, or an inventor, just sit down quietly and say, God reveals to me new creative ideas, original wonderful ideas, which bless humanity in countless ways. Then watch the wonderful ideas come to you. They will come because when you call infinite intelligence answers you. Remember what it says in the Bible, call upon me, I'll answer you. I'll be with you in trouble. I'll set you on high because you had known my name. The name means the nature, while the nature of infinite intelligence is responsiveness. Call and the response comes. Constantly affirm, feel, and believe that God multiplies your good exceedingly and you will be enriched every moment of the day, spiritually, mentally, intellectually, and socially, for there is no end to the glory of man for his daily living. Watch the wonders that will happen as you impress these truths in your subconscious mind. As you read this lecture, let these truths sink into your subconscious, and they will, and they are. You're engraving them on your subconscious mind. The more you do this, the quicker you will impregnate your deeper mind. You'll experience a glorious future in a financial way and in every way. Watch your thoughts. Never talk about economic lack and limitation. Never talk about being poor or in want. It is very foolish to talk to your neighbors or relatives about hard times, financial problems, and like matters. Count your blessings. Begin to think prosperous thoughts. Talk about the divine riches present everywhere. Realize that the feeling of wealth produces wealth. When you talk about not having enough to go around and how little you have, how you must cut corners and eat the cheapest meat, 
These thoughts are creative and you are only impoverishing yourself. Use the money you now have freely. Release it with joy and realize that God's wealth flows to you in avalanches of abundance. Look up to the source as you turn to the divine presence within you. The response will come. It is written, He careth for you. You will find neighbors, strangers, and associates adding to your good and also to your supply of material things. Make it a practice to pray for divine guidance in all your ways and believe that God or the supreme intelligence is supplying all your needs according to his riches and glory. Claim it boldly. Come boldly to the throne of grace, Paul says. Grace, when it is removed from its mystique, is simply the mathematical, orderly reflection of your habitual thinking and imagery. In other words, there is a supreme intelligence that responds to your conscious thinking and imagery. Pray for divine guidance in all your ways. As you make a habit of this attitude of mind, you will find the invisible law of opulence can and will produce visible riches for you. Recently, a doctor told me that her constant prayer was as follows. I live in a joyous expectancy of the best and invariably the best comes to me. My favorite Bible verse, she said, with which I saturate my mind is he giveth all life and breath and all things. That's from the book of Acts, 17th chapter, 25th verse. She has learned that she's not dependent on people for joy, health, success, happiness, or peace of mind. She looks to the living spirit almighty within her for promotion, achievement, wealth, success, and happiness. Whosoever trusteth in the Lord, happy is he. That's from the book of Proverbs, 16th chapter, 20th verse. Contemplate promotion, success, achievement, illumination and inspiration and the spirit of the almighty will move on your behalf compelling you to express fully what you meditate on let go now and permit the infinite riches of the infinite one to open up new doors for you and let wonders happen in your life in prayer therapy avoid struggle and strain don't try and force things how could you add power to omnipotence can you make a seed grow you can't plant it in the ground it will grow the oak is in the acorn, the apple is in the apple seed. The archetype or pattern is there, but you must deposit it in the soil where it dies, undergoes dissolution, and bequeaths its energy to another form of itself. A spiritually minded person looks at an acorn and sees a forest. You know. Yes, that's the way your subconscious works. It magnifies your good exceedingly. Avoid strain because this attitude is indicative of your disbelief. If you're worrying, fearful, and anxious, well, that inhibits your good. These thoughts and feelings bring about blocks, impediments, and delays in your life. What does fear do? That which I greatly feared has come upon me. Reverse it. That which I greatly love comes into my experience. Love is emotional attachment. Your subconscious contains all the wisdom and power necessary to solve any problem. Your conscious mind is prone to look at external conditions and tends continually to struggle and to resist. Remember, however, it is the quiet mind that gets things done. Quiet your body periodically. Tell it to be still and relax. It has to obey you. Your body moves as moved upon. Your body acts as acted upon. Your body has no self-conscious intelligence, no volition, no will. It moves as moved upon. You can play a melody of God on your body. When your conscious mind is quiet and receptive, the wisdom of the subconscious rises to the surface mind and you receive your solution. A beauty parlor operator told me that the secret of her success was that every morning prior to opening her beauty salon, she had a quiet period in which she affirmed, God's peace fills my soul and God's love saturates my whole being. God guides, prospers, and inspires me. I am illumined from on high, and his healing love flows from me to all my clients. Divine love comes in my door, and divine love goes out of my door. Everyone who comes into my salon is blessed, healed, and inspired. The infinite healing presence saturates the whole place. This is the day the Lord hath made, and I rejoice and give thanks for the countless blessings which come to my clients and to myself. She had this prayer written out on a card and reiterated these truths every morning at night. She gives thanks for all her clients, claiming 
that they are guided, prospered, happy, and harmonious, and that God and His love flow through each one filling up all the empty vessels in their lives. She stated to me that after three months of following this prayer technique, she had far more clients than she could handle. She had to hire three additional operators. She had discovered the riches of effective prayer and prospered beyond her fondest dreams. A sales manager told me he had been fired because of excessive drinking on the job and because of being involved with one of the secretaries in the office. He was very distressed, dejected, and worried about his wife, his income, and his future. In talking with his wife later, I discovered she was a chronic nagger and had tried unsuccessfully to dominate and control her husband. She was abnormally jealous and very possessive, and she clocked him in every evening, creating a scene if he wasn't home by a certain hour. He was emotionally and spiritually immature and did not handle the matter at all constructively. He deeply resented her nagging and her clocking of his arrival at home and retaliated by drinking and becoming involved with another woman. He said to me, I just wanted to get even with her. Both of them agreed that it takes two to make a marriage go. It takes two to prosper. If a husband and wife will agree on prosperity and success, agreement means harmony. They will prosper. They will have all the money they need to do what they want when they want to do it. When you have all the wealth you need to do what you want when you want to do it, you're as rich as Croesus. Both of them agreed to start a prayer process night and morning, realizing that as they prayed for each other, there could not possibly be any bitterness, hostility, or resentment as divine love casts out everything unlike itself. She prayed night and morning as follows. My husband is God's man. God is guiding him to his true place. What he is seeking is seeking him. Divine love fills his soul and divine peace fills his mind and heart. He is prospered in all his ways spiritually, mentally, financially, socially, and in every way. By day and by night, he is advancing, moving forward, and growing spiritually, mentally, financially, socially, intellectually, and in all ways, for life itself is growth. There is peace, love, harmony, and understanding between us. There is divine right action and divine peace operating in our lives. Her husband prayed for her night and morning as follows. My wife is God's child. She is the daughter of the infinite, a child of eternity. Divine love fills her soul, and it is written, He careth for her. Divine love, peace, harmony, and joy flow through her at all times. She is divinely guided and prospered in all her ways, for to prosper is to grow along all lines. There is harmony, peace, love, and understanding between us. I salute the divinity in her, and she salutes the divinity in me. As both of them became relaxed and peaceful, they realized that only good could come out of their situation. Soon, he received a phone call from the president of the company stating that he had heard that he had reconciled with his wife. At the same time, he praised him for his past achievements and accomplishments within the organization. Actually, his wife, without his knowledge, had visited the president of the company and had told him the whole story. She told him how happy they are now and how the other woman had vanished out of his life. She told him how they were now praying together and he was impressed. She and her husband discovered very quickly the riches of scientific prayer. The riches of the infinite are within you. You will know if you have succeeded in prayer by the way you feel. If you remain worried or anxious, if you're wondering how, when, and where, or through what source your answer will come, you are meddling. This indicates you do not really trust the wisdom of your subconscious. Avoid nagging yourself all day long, or even from time to time. When you think of your desire, lightness of touch is important. Remind yourself that infinite intelligence is taking care of the matter in divine order. Far better than you can by tenseness of your conscious mind. For example, if you say, well, I need $5,000 by the 15th of next month, or the judge must make a decision for me by the first of the month, otherwise I'll lose my home, my mortgage, and so on. That's fear, anxiety, and tension. What will that do? Bring blocks, delays, impediments, and difficulties into your life. Always go to the source. Remember, in peace and in confidence shall be your strength. When you're anxious, tense, and worried, you will not bring about prosperity, peace of mind, health, or anything good. 
Go back to the source. Come to a place of absolute rest in your mind and reiterate these truths to yourself. It is done unto me as I believe. Go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. All things be ready if the mind be so, which means all I have to do is be ready to receive the benediction, the guidance, the wealth, the answer, the solution, and the way out. According to my faith is it done unto me. Go in peace, thy faith has made thee whole. The light of God shines in me. The peace of the everlasting fills my soul, and quietness and confidence shall be my strength. God gave me richly all things to enjoy. With God all things are possible. Reiterate these simple truths. Say, The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. When I call upon him, he answers me. He'll be with me in trouble and set me on high because he had known my name. God is my instant and everlasting supply and ever-present help in time of trouble. Reiterate these truths. Read the 23rd and 91st Psalms. Go over them quietly, peacefully, and lovingly. You'll get to a point of rest and peace in your mind, and you'll realize that God is never late and that God is your instant and everlasting supply guiding you directing you and revealing to you everything you need to know god is opening up the door for you revealing to you the solution god's riches are circulating in your life and there's always a surplus when you act with that attitude of mind the way will open up the dawn will appear and the shadows will flee away but you won't get an answer through worry fear tension and anxiety these states of mind will only attract more lack and more difficulties. So reverse it. Go back to the source and reiterate the truths you know. Dwell upon the truths of God such as God is absolute peace, absolute harmony, boundless wisdom, infinite intelligence, the ever-living one, the all-wise one, the all-knowing one, the self-renewing one, God knows all and sees all and is the source of all blessings. That will quiet your mind and give you peace, and a mind at peace always gets the answer, for in quietness and confidence shall be your strength. God knows only the answer, so learn to let go and relax. Do not give power to externals and conditions. Give power to the allegiance, to the infinite presence and power within you. The swimming instructor tells you that you can float on the water, which will support you if you remain quiet, still, and at peace. But if you get nervous, tense, and fearful, you will sink. When you are seeking wealth, prosperity, success, a spiritual healing, or any desire, feel that you are immersed in the holy omnipresence. You know, like you feel when you're in the ocean or in a swimming pool. Realize that the golden river of life, love, truth, and beauty are flowing through you now, transforming your whole being into the pattern of harmony, love, peace, and abundance. Feel yourself swimming in the great ocean of life. That sense of oneness will restore you, for he restoreth my soul. The following meditation will bring many wonderful things into your life. Listen to it and say, these truths are sinking into my subconscious mind. I picture them going from my conscious to my subconscious like the seeds I have deposited in the soil. I know that I create my own destiny. My fate is in the infinite being that creates all things and my faith in God is my fortune. I have abiding faith in all things good. I live in the joyous expectancy of the best and only the best comes to me. I know the harvest I will reap in the future because all my thoughts are God's thoughts. The power of God is with my thoughts of good. My thoughts are the seeds of goodness, truth, beauty, and abundance. I now place my thoughts of love, peace, joy, success, abundance, security, and goodwill in the garden of my mind. This is God's garden. The glory and beauty of God will be expressed in my life, and I know my garden will yield an abundant harvest. From this moment forward, I express life, love, and truth. I am radiantly happy and prosperous in all my ways. God multiplies my good exceedingly. To prosper means to succeed, to thrive, to turn out well. In other words, when you are prospering, 
you are expanding and growing spiritually, mentally, financially, socially, and intellectually. Never be envious or jealous of another person's wealth, their promotion, their diamonds or jewels, because that will impoverish you. Those emotions will attract lack and limitation to you. Rejoice in their success, prosperity, and wealth, and wish for them greater riches. What you wish for another, you are wishing for yourself, for you are the only thinker. What you are thinking about another, you are creating in your own mind, body, experience, and pocketbook. This is why you rejoice in the success, prosperity, and in the millions that others have. In order to truly prosper, it is necessary that you become a channel through which the life principle flows freely, harmoniously, joyously, and lovingly. I suggest that you establish a definite method of working and thinking and that you practice it regularly and systematically every day. One young man who consulted me had experienced a poverty complex for many years and he had received no answers to his prayers. He had prayed for prosperity but the fear of poverty continuously weighed on his mind. Naturally, he attracted more lack and limitation than prosperity. The subconscious mind accepts the dominant of two ideas. Change your mind from belief in poverty and begin to believe in God's riches, which are all around you, infinite riches. After talking with me, he began to realize that his thought image of wealth produces wealth, that every thought is creative unless it is neutralized by a counterthought of greater intensity. Furthermore, he realized that his thought and belief about poverty was greater than his belief in the infinite riches all around him. Consequently, he changed his thoughts and kept them changed. I wrote out a prosperity thought for him as follows. It will benefit you too. I know there is only one source, the life principle, the living spirit from which all things flow. It created the universe and all things therein contained. I am a focal point of the divine presence. My mind is open and receptive. I am a free-flowing channel for harmony, beauty, guidance, wealth, and the riches of the infinite. I know that wealth, health, and success are released from within and appear in the without. I am now in harmony with the infinite riches within and without, and I know these thoughts are sinking into my subconscious mind and will be reflected on the screen of space. I wish for everyone all the blessings of life. I am open and receptive to the divine riches, spiritual, mental, and material, and they flow to me in avalanches of abundance. This young man focused his thoughts on God's riches rather than on poverty. He made it a special point never to deny what he affirmed. Many people pray for wealth, you know, and then deny it an hour later. They say, I can't afford this. I can't make ends meet. They're making a mockery of their own prayer. They're like the man who gets into a taxi in New York on his way to the airport and says to the taxi driver, oh, take me back home, I forgot my passport. So the taxi driver takes him back home. Then as they're on their way again, he says, oh, I had better go to my club, I forgot my wallet. So the taxi driver takes him to his club. Then he says, oh, I forgot some letters at my grandmother's. So off they go to the grandmother's. He gives half a dozen directions in half an hour to the taxi driver. Finally, the taxi driver takes him to the police station because he realizes He's mental. Well, now, this is the way millions of people pray, even in the New Thought movement. They give half a dozen directions to their subconscious mind in half an hour or an hour. Their subconscious is so confused and perplexed, it doesn't know what to do. So it doesn't do anything. This results in plain frustration. You don't put a seed in the ground and dig it up, so don't contradict what you have affirmed. That's the way many people pray for prosperity. They are constantly denying what they are affirming and they are making a mockery of prayer. This young man focused his thoughts on God's riches rather than poverty and he stopped saying, I can't afford or I can't buy that piano or I can't buy that car. Never use the word can't. Can't is the only devil in the universe. Your subconscious takes you literally and blocks all your good. In a month's time, his whole life was transformed he affirmed the above truths morning and evening for about 10 minutes, slowly and quietly engraving them in his mind, knowing what he was doing and believing what he was doing. He knew that he was actually writing down these truths in his subconscious mind, causing the latter to be activated and to release its hidden treasures. 
The gold mine is in your subconscious. The diamond mine is there. It is the source of all the riches of heaven. Although this man had been a salesman for 10 years with rather dim prospects for the future, suddenly he was made sales manager at 30,000 per annum plus prime benefits. Your subconscious mind has ways you know not of. It is impossible to impregnate your subconscious mind with the idea of wealth and be poor. It's impossible to impregnate your subconscious with the ideas of success and fail. Good heavens, you were born to win, to succeed. The infinite cannot fail. You were born to triumph. Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I hath is thine. Let your prayer be by day and by night. I am advancing moving forward and growing. God gave me richly all things to enjoy. This concludes The Wealth Mindset by Dr. Joseph Murphy. A very simple and powerful lecture. And here we see the power of affirmation as Joseph Murphy taught. He tells us when you are in a place of lack, when you are struggling with your finances, when you have encountered a poverty mindset, that you can change that. You can change your subconscious mind and the key to heaven is within your subconscious mind. I know that Joseph Murphy taught to affirm is to state that it is so. And as you maintain this attitude of mind as true, regardless of all evidence to the contrary, you will receive an answer to your prayer as he treated affirmations like prayers your thought can only affirm for even if you deny something you're actually affirming the presence of what you deny he mentions earlier that vain repetition doesn't work that you must believe in what you're affirming repeating an affirmation knowing what you are saying and why you are saying it leads the mind to that state of consciousness where it accepts that which you state as true. Go back to this episode and try these affirmations out. Perhaps I will create a meditation in the future where you can listen to these affirmations on a regular basis. But more importantly, you can most likely create your own affirmations based upon what you're struggling with. Affirming the life principle, the divine within you is expressing all about you. A lot of times the biggest struggle is just believing in this. I know that many of you want to believe, but you see the world around you and it simply is not so. Because what's happening is you may be affirming or listening to episodes like this and then right away denying your own affirmation. I can't afford this. I'll never be able to do that. I can't experience this prosperity. It's hard. It's not easy, obviously. Very few understand this lesson. So what we have here is four steps for the wealth mindset. The first step is to reason it out in your mind that God or the life principle or the living spirit is the source of the universe. Just understanding that simple idea that God is the source of the universe. And then to decide now to engrave in your subconscious mind as the second step to engrave in your subconscious mind the idea of wealth. Ideas are conveyed to the subconscious by repetition, faith, and expectancy. The third step is to repeat this affirmation which he gives in his four-step process that I am now writing in my subconscious mind the idea of God's wealth. God is the source of my supply when I know God is the life principle within me and I know I'm alive. All my needs are met at every moment of time and point of space. God's wealth flows freely, joyously, and endlessly into my experience, and I give thanks for God's riches forever circulating in my life. And the fourth step is that when thoughts of lack come to you, such as I can't afford that trip or I can't meet that note in the bank, that you reverse it. He simply says that you can reverse it by saying God is my instant and everlasting supply and that bill is paid in divine order. Four simple steps outlined within this beautiful lecture that you can follow and you can create that wealth mindset 
that is so powerful to transform your life. You can find all episodes of The Reality Revolution at therealityrevolution.com. Be sure to check out the playlist on Joseph Murphy. There are so many amazing lectures. He is one of my very, very favorites. And if I'm ever down or struggling with my thoughts, the easiest solution is for me just to turn on a Joseph Murphy episode or read a Joseph Murphy book, and I recommend that you try it. Thank you so much for joining me. I affirm wealth health and happiness for all who listen divine order flows within you and harmony is in your life in all things and welcome to the reality revolution We return you now to your local announcer.